Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm not in my home patch today, not even in Massachusetts. I am in France. I'm staying in a small town right now about one hour south of Paris. I'm here for work, meetings with colleagues and other things like that. And so I have had just a little bit of time to bird in the evenings after I get home and back to my hotel, um, you know, just sort of uh, 45 minutes to an hour before it gets dark. But uh, it's the weekend right now, so I'm here for more than one week. And so today uh, I do have time to go back to this one birding place that's pretty good and spend a little more time. So the name of this town is Etampes, E-T-A-M-P-E-S. I'll try to put up a little map to show you where it is. Um, it's not a birding hotspot. Uh, nobody comes here for the birds, but one of the nice things about business travel is you can squeeze in a little time for birds uh, here and there after work or if you have a little bit of free time. So a lot of cars going by here. So it's a Sunday morning right now. It's raining a little bit. It's not supposed to rain all day, but uh, streets are pretty empty. Not too many pedestrians or cars right now. So it's about a 15 minute walk over to this birding location. And on the way there, um, what I'm going to do is uh, show you some of the birds that I've already uh, photographed and videoed in the few days that I've been here, just in the short time that I've had each day to bird. Most of these birds have been seen in this hot spot, which I'll talk about when I get there, um, but there's a few that were sort of on the way over. So let's start with this black red start, which was uh, singing on top of a roof. And I have seen these in Europe before, and it seems like when I see them, they're always um, up on top of the roof of a house. So uh, on par for that. Cute little bird, very common in Europe. Not the best shots because uh, it was sort of straight up onto the roof, but um, good one to get on the list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep a trip list and anything that I photograph well that we haven't seen for the channel, then we'll add that to the channel life list as well at the bottom. So this part of the path going to the hotspot from my hotel runs along a very small canal, which you can see there. So quite a pleasant little walk. Uh, the next bird I wanna show you is another one that I found on the way to the hotspot, not actually in the hotspot. And that is a kestrel, or I believe it's the Eurasian kestrel over here. I saw a small falcon fly right over my head as I was walking along. And I thought, oh, that was a falcon, but I'm never going to be able to, you know, get a photo of it because it disappeared. But then I walked another block and came over to this intersection with traffic coming by. And there it was sitting on a post kind of in somebody's uh, yard there. And at this point, I didn't have my camera out of my backpack or anything. You know, I wasn't, wasn't ready. So I had to kind of scramble around, get the camera out. I was pretty sure it was going to fly away before I did that, but it didn't. It stuck around for me. And actually got some pretty nice close footage. In fact, the bird never did fly away. I actually walked away from the bird. The bird didn't fly away from me. That doesn't happen too often. So that's really cool. Uh, you know, I've had trouble getting good footage of the American kestrel over in Massachusetts. And here I come over here and on day two, I get a nice close up uh, version of the European kestrel. So that was fun. All right, so I've arrived at the local hotspot here in Etamp. It's actually the only eBird hotspot for this little city. eBird is not uh, as widely used in France as it is in the US, but um, it's a nice hotspot. The translation of the name of it is something like the leisure base of Etamp. I'll put up a uh, screenshot of the hotspot, but uh, 
I, I think the best translation of that, probably something like the Atomp Recreation Area, which is uh, similar to my home patch, which is the Horn Pond Recreation Area. So it's kind of a fun place. It's got uh, the pond that you can see here and some, some water going through it. There's a swimming pool. There's children's playgrounds, there's like an archery area and other things like that. So just sort of a general purpose area kind of sprawling around, but it has some pretty natural areas with some forest and stuff, which I haven't had that much time to explore so far. So I'm looking forward to doing that today. Uh, getting back to the birds that I've seen here, the first time I came here, so literally the first birding that I was able to do when I got to France, I came to this pond and I saw all these ducks out there in the distance. And it was pretty cool. You could see immediately that there were Canada geese out there, so very familiar with those. Then there were these ones that you can actually see, didn't plan this, but there they are swimming right by there. They actually look like um, greater white-fronted geese, but they're not. Um, they're not found here, and they're actually kind of domesticated. And I believe the best description for the eBird checklist is a, a domestic gray lag goose. That's, that's my best guess. But I spent a little time looking at those, trying to figure those out. And then I noticed that there were two much smaller white geese in with this flock that I was looking at. And I didn't pay too much attention to them initially, and then I started looking at them. And at first, I thought maybe they were juveniles of the of the larger geese, uh, maybe the white-fronted geese or whatever they were, because they had the striping on their heads, which I've seen in juveniles before. After looking at them for, for a few seconds, I realized, no, those are actually some kind of adult goose. I still wasn't getting like excited or anything. Then I walked over, got a closer look at them, and it sort of nagged at my memory that I've seen something like that in a bird guide before. Like maybe it was something like a bar-headed goose, and I looked it up in my European bird guide, and that's exactly what they are. They are bar-headed geese. I still wasn't getting excited because I'm assuming, okay, these are gonna be some kind of, um, you know, introduced exotic bird that they have here in this pond. But when I finally went to the checklist later on, I saw that bar-headed goose is listed as a established introduced species. So it's a countable bird that has established itself in this area of France. And I had no idea. So it's a really cool looking goose and it is actually a lifer for me. I have never seen that one before and it's countable. So that was pretty exciting. So that's actually the first lifer that I have gotten for my channel while birding, you know, actually seeing it for a video. So that's kind of a, a nice, uh, nice milestone for the channel. So bar-headed goose definitely goes on the channel list. Really neat looking, uh, really neat looking goose. Very small, very petite with that really striking pattern on the head. Okay, so I'm just walking on the path that goes around this little pond here. And I think the next bird that I saw after those geese that was a good bird is a great crested grebe. It's a cool looking bird. I've seen these in Europe before. Um, this individual has been kind of floating out in the pond every time I've, I've visited. I think this is my third or fourth trip here already. So um, obviously a, a regular that lives here and a neat bird to see. Uh, most of the time it was out in the middle. I think I did get some footage where it was coming in pretty close, so we'll put that up now. Another good bird, another new one for the channel list, obviously. And then I think right after that, I had a woodpecker in the trees on the other side of the path and which I believe is a great spotted woodpecker. Good sized woodpecker that is fairly common in Europe. And I think I got some, a uh, little bit of video and some photos which are good enough uh, to add that one to the channel list as well. So this was all on the first day. So I was pretty, pretty pleased with how this hotspot was turning out. Uh, just a 20 minute walk from my hotel. So as soon as I stopped filming that last clip where I was talking about the great spotted woodpecker, I heard some loud clicking in the bushes next to me. All of a sudden a bird got really excited and popped up and I grabbed my camera and it was actually um, another new bird. So we're gonna put that one on right now. So this is not a previous sighting. This is one that I got about uh, 30 seconds ago and that is a European wren. You can see it's a tiny little guy 
It's very closely related to the winter wren in North America, and I believe at some point they were considered to be the same species. I may be wrong about that, but it um, looks, uh, looks identical from uh, what I can see. So cool addition to the list, and it was nice that it popped up right next to me. So one thing I wanted to mention is that I have birded in Europe a fair amount over the years. You know, I've had a lot of uh, work trips to Europe over the years, and then I've had some family trips. It's never been a dedicated birding trip. It's always been trying to squeeze in a little birding here and there <laughs> around my, my other obligations. So my, my total European bird list is around 135 species and it's you know it's dominated by the common species that you can see uh walking out of a hotel room um, to the nearest place and things like that so i can't just walk out of a hotel and start picking up lifers right and left but there are certainly plenty of uh, plenty of birds that i can find at lifers so that makes it makes it kind of fun i did get a second lifer already on this trip here at this hot spot i think it was on my second visit i was just walking along the pond like i am now and uh, all of a sudden I caught a flash of bright blue just streaking over the water. And I knew what it was. It's a bird that I've really always wanted to see and that is a common kingfisher. Uh, considered to be one of the most beautiful birds in Europe. They're just uh, this gorgeous shade of blue, bright blue on the back and then they have the red on the front. Uh, and there was actually a pair, so a second one joined them and they were just zooming all over the pond and I just watched them for about 10 seconds. I finally thought to bring my camera up and try to take a few shots. Um, I just sort of fired indiscriminately, didn't know if I was even going to be able to focus because they were moving so fast. Um, I'll put those photos up. Actually, you know, did better than I thought I would the way I was just sort of, uh, you know, pointing and, and pulling the trigger really quickly. But um, not good enough to count on the channel list, I would say. But you can see what I'm looking at here in these pictures. So that was exciting lifer number two for me on, on the trip so that was a lot of fun okay so two more birds that i have on the list that have been easy to see here at this hot spot are the eurasian coot and the eurasian moorhen um, they're both uh, black water birds the coot has a white bill the moorhen has a red bill i found them to be common birds in europe you tend to see them uh, in public parks and things like that not real shy they're obviously closely related to the North American versions, the uh, American coot and the uh, common moorhen that we have over there. But uh, I would say they're even more common in Europe than they are in the U.S. So I was able to get good footage of both of those birds here. So two more new ones for the channel list. Okay, so I've been birding here now for about an hour and a half to two hours in the woods. It's actually been, been pretty eventful. Um, so number one, it's, it's raining. That's not good. Um, not raining hard, but obviously a little annoying. And it's, it's quite dark, which is uh, difficult. I've been mostly trying to see small birds. And uh, when it's dark and they're moving around in the heavy foliage, it's, it's been tough. But the, on the positive side, there actually has been a lot of bird activity. So a lot of small birds flitting around. I've had, I think, four different kinds of tits, which are little birds related to the chickadees we have in North America. So I think I've had great tit, blue tit, long-tailed tit, and marsh tit, of which I don't think I have photographed uh, any of them very well. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of been the, the difficulty in it. So let's uh, switch quickly to a few birds that I have photographed. Just now I was able to get some good photos and a little video uh, snippet of a European goldfinch. Unfortunately, this looks to be an immature. Um, the male European goldfinches or the adults uh, have a really spectacular uh, color of red on the head. This one's, this one's pretty plain, but that's what it is.
And another bird, which is uh, very common here, um, I've probably seen almost 10 of them or heard 10 of them, and that is the European robin, real cute little bird with uh, red on the throat. This is one that is not related to the American robin. That was, um, the American robin was just named that because it has uh, red on the front, but they're not really related at all. So one other kind of funny thing I wanted to mention is that I have just now discovered that Merlin works here in France. Um, I'm talking about the sound ID feature of Merlin, which if you haven't heard of it, is a, a very popular uh, birding app put out by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology um, for, for identifying birds. So you just, you just turn it on and if there are bird sounds playing, then it'll, it'll ID them for you. But I know when it first came out that it only worked in North America, it did not work in Europe, and I was just sort of assuming that that was still the case. And I've been hearing all these birds and thinking, boy, it sure would be nice to have Merlin to help me ID them, you know, because I don't know the, the European bird sounds, obviously. And then I just thought, well, okay, maybe I'll try it. And I turned it on and yeah, they've upgraded it and it, and it works over here now. And right away I was able to ID uh, a few more birds that I didn't have. So anyways, uh, that's a tip. If you come to Europe, Merlin works and it's, uh, that's super helpful. Okay, I'm back from my long walk in the woods uh, out near the main pond again and I uh, did see quite a few birds in there. The difficulty was photographing them. Um, after some effort, I did manage to get some of them on film. So I'll go through those now. We'll add them to at least the uh, trip list. There was a flock of gold crests and fire crests, which are tiny little birds that flit around. They're related to the kinglets that we have in North America. And I think I got a few photos of a fire crest, nothing spectacular. I think I got one photo of a long-tailed tit, which came out reasonably well. So if I did, I'll, I'll put that up right now. Another bird that came by briefly was a nuthatch, and this is the Eurasian nuthatch. Um, looks a little bit like our red-breasted nuthatch in North America, so again, I think I got some sort of mediocre photos of that, which I'll put up. Another bird that I had a couple of days ago that I wanted to make sure I got on the list is a white wagtail. This was sort of hopping around on this uh, deck that goes out into the water, as you can see, walking along on the railing. And uh, this is a real common bird in Europe. Just, uh, you always see them kind of around the lawns, flying around, flashing the white, and uh, kind of catches your eye. Making sure I don't forget anything here, we have a photo of a European green woodpecker. This is a really gorgeous uh, woodpecker. I wish I had more than just this one photograph of it, but we'll add that to the trip list at least. Then the very first bird that I saw when I got here was this gray heron out in the water. And I took a couple of shots and then I prepared to get some video and it flew away. And I figured, well, I'll see it again sometime. And I never did. So that'll just go on the trip list as well, the gray heron. And I think there's one more bird that I might have, which is the Eurasian magpie. Another one that I was able to photograph up in a tree. This is another really good looking bird that I wish I had something better of, but uh, that'll have to go on the trip list uh, just with this photo. So with that, I'm going to wrap this video up here. 
thanks very much for watching. I am going to have another video from France where I go into Paris and bird some of the uh, parks in Paris and along the river a little bit. So that should be kind of fun. So look for sort of a part two of my uh, French birding adventure that should come after this video. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.